This week we're going to learn how to take GFS data and produce a 24-hour height change map. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to learn how to make that nice height change map using GFS data. So first we're going to have to do a lot of imports because we're going to have to get data, do a little bit of conditioning to it, and then plot it on a map. Now we've covered a lot of the subtopics in other MetPy Monday videos, so I'm not going to go too into depth on how I found the address for the threads catalog or how we're using the NetCDF subset service queries. Those have all been covered in other videos, and if you're unfamiliar with those, I highly recommend you watch those videos as well as this one. Import cartapy.crs for the coordinate reference system as cartapy coordinate reference system CCRS. Cartapy.feature as C feature, so we can get those states and other outlines. Matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. NumPy as NP, that's always handy when we're doing some manipulations on this array like data. From date time, I'm going to import date time and time delta. From net CDF4, I'm going to import the num2date function. And finally, from siphon.catalog, I'm going to import the threads data server catalog object. We're going to use the best GFS data collection. So we're going to create a threads data server catalog object with the web address for that, which is threads.ucar.edu slash threads slash catalog grib incep gfs global underscore zero p25 deg for 0 0.25 or quarter degree resolution slash catalog.xml. The data set that we're looking for is grib incep gfs global 0p25 deg best. If we want to see what we get back from that, we can print, we'll have to wrap in list so it displays nicely, the best gfs instance of tds dot data sets. And we see in this case we only have one that's returned, which is the best GFS quarter degree forecast time series. So our best data set from our best GFS instance of threads catalog is data sets the zero with object. And then we're going to create an instance of the subset service on that data set. So best DS dot subset. And we're going to call that NCSS for NetCDF subset service. I'm going to create a query, ncss.query. And then we're going to constrain this query. We don't want everything from the best set. What do we want? Well, first, we can use a lon lat box. And we can confine the data that's returned, reduce the number of bits that we have to get shipped to us. So I'm going to go south 20, north 55, east of 290, and west of 235 to cover CONUS. Yeah, that should work for us. I'm going to tell it that I want a NetCDF4 type return. What variables do I want? Well, really, I just need the geopotential height isobaric. If you want to add wind barbs on, you could certainly do that by getting U component of wind isobaric and V component of wind isobaric. For the vertical level, we want 50,000 HPA, or, or sorry, 50,000 PA. 500 HPA. 
I'm going to get the current date time and then query time range from now to now plus time delta of one day. So it'll give me that 24 hour height change. All right, so we've created our query. Now it's time to actually go get the data. So our data is in CSS dot get data for our instance of query. And then just to be sure that we get what we think we should, we'll print out a list of the data variables that are returned. So we do get our geopotential height. Uh, we've got our latitude, longitude, time, ref time. Yep, so it looks like everything that we expect to be there is indeed there. So I'm gonna pull this apart in the, the simpler way. Uh, not really gonna work on using X-ray and make this any more of a complex example because we're only dealing with a single variable. It's pretty easy to pull that out, though we do have lat and lawn to deal with as well. Okay, so our height variable is data geopotential height isobaric. Our time variable is data time. Remember that could be time one or some other time index. We have talked about ways to deal with that before, but for now it's just time. Our lat variable is data latitude. Our lawn variable is data longitude. Our height values are going to be height variable with an empty slice dot squeeze, which gets rid of any of those zero size dimensions, or one size dimensions. Let's see, then we want our lat vowels to be lat var, empty slice, squeeze, lawn vowels, lawn var, empty slice, squeeze. Now time we have to deal with just a little bit differently. Remember, because in time we have to use num to date because of the way NetCTF is storing time. We've talked about that before. So time vowels is num to date, time var, empty slice dot squeeze, time var dot units. And last but not least, we have this 1D lat and lawn vowels, but we need them in a 2D grid so we can do our plotting. So we can create that very easily using NumPy's mesh grid function on our lawn vowels and our lat vowels. Oh, and that should be num to date. And there we go. So now we're ready to start doing the actual plotting. So our map CRS, again, you can guess this by now using my favorite Lambert conformal projection, a central latitude of 45, a central longitude of minus 100, our bounds, going to be a list with a tuple, minus 122, minus 75, 25, and 50. I'm going to create a figure, fig size of 17 by 12. Add a subplot to it, one row, one column. First plot projection is our map CRS. Set the extent by unpacking bounds and making sure that we do tell it that our bounds are in latitude and longitude or plat -curie. So a lot of this is just very boilerplate map setup. Okay, coastline, scale 1 to 50 million. Go with a 0.75 line width. And we'll add states, 
0.5 line width. Let's just make sure that our blank map's working. Yep, I'm happy with the way that looks. So now we can start adding our features. First, let's get the heights contoured on there. We want to see what the current heights are. I'm going to call it C height for contours of height. I'm going to call the contour function lon 2d lat 2d, giving it our x and y's. Height vowels. Our first index is the time, so we want the zeroth time. We want all the x and y. Uh, we're going to make it black contour, line widths of 2, and don't forget that we're in plat Korea. Alright, so we've got what should be a low here, we've got a ridge out here. This looks roughly right, knowing the current weather scenario. So let's go ahead and keep going with this. Let's contour the falls. And that means we need to calculate them. So the falls we can calculate by subtracting the height at the last time step and the height at the first time step. So this will take the ending height, subtract the initial height, and that will give us the change over that interval. And then really the rest of this is going to be very similar. So we're going to do our falls there. But I want to change a little bit how they appear, otherwise they're going to look identical to our other contours and be a little hard to, to tell. Okay, we're going to want to change our line width to be a little narrower. And oh, we'll go with specifying you now let's say maybe minus 150 to 100 blocks of 10 for our levels. Let's see how that looks. That's not too bad. Might be a little dense, but we'll, we'll see what we think of it here. I'm going to add some filled contours. Again, I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to call it contoured filled. We're calling contour F. And we want to specify a color map. I'm going to use the cool warm color map. Oh, and we need to take the colors out. It's not going to like both of those being specified. And it's going to not want line widths either. We can take that out. It's just ignoring it. Okay, but this is starting to look like a respectable map. The main thing we're missing now are some labels on the contours. Let's go ahead and add contour labels. So I'm going to call C label. First on our heights. I'm going to give those a nice big label. I want them to be inline. We'll specify an inline spacing. We'll specify a format as well. And right side up. These are all just options that make things look a little bit nicer from experience. And then we're going to contour or label our falls as well. The falls will give them a smaller font size. And while we're making our plot look nice, we're going to call set title and call it 24 hour GFS 500 HPA height change. And we'll give that a font size of 24. So now if we run this, we get a really nice looking map. If we zoom out a little bit there so you can see it more clearly, where we have the current heights contoured and labeled. Then in much thinner contours, we have the height falls that are expected over the next 24 hours and the rises as this low passes. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPie Monday.